the enemy said to you, Ah, the ancient heights have become our possession. Therefore prophesy and say, This is what the Lord says. Do you hear the word say a lot? It's because we ourselves need to decree and declare a thing. We need to decree and declare because God created the earth. And how did he do it? But he spoke and he declared. And even here, it's saying right now that the enemy is saying, ah, we got you. Just like in America, they're saying, ah, we got you. But their time is, is short. So the prophecy says, this is what the Lord says, because they ravaged and hounded you from every side so that you became possession of the rest of the nations and the object of people's malicious talk and slander, which that happened, the right and the left. The left has done that to the right. Therefore, O mountains of Israel, hear the word of the sovereign Lord. This is what the Lord says to the mountains and hills, to the ravines and the valleys, to the desolate ruins and the deserted towns that have been plundered and ridiculed by the rest of the nations around you. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. In my burning zeal, I have spoken against the rest of the nations and against all Edom. For with glee and with malice in their hearts, they made my land their own possession so that they might plunder its pasture land. Therefore prophesy concerning the land of Israel and say to the mountains and hills, say again to the mountains and the hills and to the ravines and the valleys. This is what the sovereign Lord says. I speak in my jealousy, wrath, because my jealous wrath, because you've suffered the scorn of the nations. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. I swear with uplifted hand, that the nations around you will also suffer scorn. But you, O mountains of Israel, will produce branches and fruit for my people Israel, for they will soon come home. I am concerned for you and will look on you with favor, and you will be plowed and sown, and I will multiply the number of people upon you, even the whole house of Israel. The towns will be inhabited and the ruins rebuilt. I will increase the number of men and animals upon you, and they will be fruitful and become numerous. I will settle people on you as in the past, and I will make you prosper more than before. Then you will know that I am the Lord. I will cause people, my people Israel, to walk upon you. They will possess you, and you will be their inheritance. You will never again deprive them of their children. Praise the Lord. Never again deprive them of their children. That's kind of like this now with the um, abortions and stuff. Never again will we be deprived our children. Glory to God. Glory to God. This is what the Lord says. Because people say to you, you devour men and deprive your nation of its children. Therefore, you will no longer devour men or make your nation childless. Declares the sovereign Lord. No longer will you make... Will I make you hear the taunts of the nations and no longer will you suffer the scorn of the people or cause your nation to fall, declares the Lord. Again, the word of the Lord came to me, son of man, when the people of Israel were living in their own land, they defiled it by their own conduct and their actions. Their conduct was like a woman's monthly uncleanliness in my sight. So I poured out my wrath on them because they had shed blood in the land because they had defiled it with their idols. I dispersed them among the nations and they were scattered through the countries. I judged them according to their conduct and their actions. And wherever they went among the nations, they profaned my holy name. For it was said of them, these are the Lord's people. And yet they had to leave the land. I had concern for my holy name, which the house of Israel profaned among the nations where they had gone. Therefore say to the house of Israel, this is what the Lord says. It is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am going to do these things, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations where you have gone. I will show the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, the name you have profaned among them. Then the nations will know that I am the Lord, 
declares the Sovereign Lord, when I show myself holy through you before their eyes. For I will take you out of the nations. I will gather you from the countries and bring you back into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. You will live in the land I gave your forefathers. You will be my people and I will be your God. I will save you from all your uncleanliness. I will call for the grain and make it plentiful and I will not bring famine upon you. I will increase the fruit of the trees and the crops of the field so that you will no longer suffer disgrace among the nations because of famine. Then you will remember your evil ways and wicked deeds and you will loathe yourselves for your sins and detestable practices. I want you to know that I am not doing this for your sake, declares the Lord. Be ashamed and disgraced for your conduct, O house of Israel. This is what the Lord says, on the day I cleanse you from all your sins, I will resettle your towns and the ruins will be rebuilt. The desolate land will be cultivated instead of lying desolate in the sight of all who pass through it. They will say the land that was laid waste has become like the Garden of Eden. The cities that were lying in ruins, desolate and destroyed, are now fortified and inhabited. Then the nations around you that remain will know that I, the Lord, have rebuilt what was destroyed and have replanted what was desolate. I, the Lord, have spoken and I will do it. This is what the Lord says. Once again, I will yield to the plea of the house of Israel and do this for them. I will make their people as numerous as sheep, as numerous as the flocks of offerings at Jerusalem during her appointed feast. So will the ruined cities be filled with flocks of people. Then they will know that I am the Lord. So God will turn it around for good. Um, Verse 26, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you, remove you from your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And as he does the work, the Holy Spirit does the work in us, um, he, we will realize and know that he is the Lord because he will rebuild. He will bring back the ruined cities with flocks of people that love him. And God can do this. He will work on our hearts. He will speak to us. And that, that is the perfect word for us today. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. So God will take us out of the nations, like in 24, and he will gather us from the countries and bring us back to our own land. And he will take us. Now this is back with Jerusalem. So Jerusalem, he's talking about he's, bringing, he's gonna bring them back because they were scattered at one point. He let them get scattered because they disobeyed him, but then he's gonna bring them back to their homeland in Israel. And even in the future, he's still now, to this day, bringing people back to Israel where they live, where they're from, their roots. But we, as a people of God, also, he's bringing us back. He's gonna bring us, he's gonna, he, there, there's been a scattering because of the enemy coming in and and choices that people have made and the shepherds even made and he struck the shepherd and the sheep scattered and that was back yesterday when I read it but today it's like he's he's gonna take and bring us together and he's gonna make us you know bring us into a new a garden of Eden like the land that was laid waste has become like the garden of Eden and that's in verse 35 you know, he's going to take what's ruined and he's going to turn it for good. He's going to bring the remnant together, the people of God who, who he has, who he's allowed, they've scattered, but the people who love him, who put their trust and hope in him, he's going to bring them back. And they are going to be many, you know, as numerous as the flocks for offering at Jerusalem during her appointed feast. And that's the last two verses. So will the ruined cities be filled with flocks of people. So praise the Lord. That was 38 or 36. I'm sorry. That was chapter 36. And it's about the comforting counterpart. Announce punishment for the nations and then restoration for Israel. So like the punishment of the nations are those who don't love God even now. 
It doesn't matter what nation, this is spiritually speaking. Those who don't love God or don't put him first, there's a punishment. But those who love him, who serve him, we're like the Israel. He's bringing back together, restoring, uniting. The promised land of which the elevated region between the Jordan Valley and the Mediterranean coast was the central core. And then there's going to be a rest for the nations. Mountains and hills and valleys. He's going to bring up the mountains or bring down the mountains and up the valleys. He's going to do opposite because God is a God of order. He's a God of justice. He's a God of righteousness. And he does things way different than we can think or imagine or understand. But when we pray and spend time with him in prayer and we keep our heart pure and we're listening to him, he says that he will show us these things. He will guide us and show us these things. And that's what's happening with the people of God right now, the prophets. We're all coming to the same. There's like a the similar line. Everybody's coming in the same words, the same things that God is doing here on the earth right now in America with the nations, uh, with, the, with the Christians, with the people of God, with the shepherds. There's a lot of judgment coming to clean out what's been wrong even in the house of God, and then cr create that new life. Just like Noah, Noah obeyed God, he closed the door and God created new life. 40 days, 40 nights, and he, he obeyed and there was, the eight of them were in there in the boat. And but then when they came out, they had new life, new, God always creates and makes new, you know. Praise the Lord, and actually he does it every eight, Eight people were in the boat. I heard this on, um, oh, what is it? Amanda Grace on YouTube. I heard this thing with Noah. There was a guy named Jonah, and he did a thing on Noah. And he was talking just the other day, I think it was yesterday, about um, there was eight people in the boat, and eight is like beginning. And every eight eight years the president even gets elected every eight years if he does the two cycles so that's like god is restoring he's bringing back at eight years eight number eight so it's just really neat to see this compared to what god's doing now it's like he's mirroring mirror mirroring it um praise god so just you know go to amanda grace on youtube also Ark of Grace Ministries, I think is what it's called, but you can pull her name up. And it was this guy named Noah, named Jonah, talking about Noah and the similarities. There's so much in the Bible right now that are similar. There's scripture, there's things that happened back then, but then that's why God has the Bible for now. And that's why we read the New Testament as well, because now you're going to see when we get in 1 John that it mirrors what was happening back then to now and god does everything eight is a new every eight years every eight people eight you know god is doing new and he's restoring he's making new he's cleaning out and bringing new and and he had he makes new trees new animals new land new everything every you know eight years so Test the spirits. That's why he gives us his word. It's not just for before. It's, it's for us to glean and learn from those in the past, in the Old Testament, but also to recognize spiritually what he's saying to us as well. And you have to ask the Lord for discernment on that. But it's very clear when we think, when we read the scripture and we recognize, okay, what's God doing now? Dear friends, 1 John 4. I do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits. That's what I just was saying. We need to have discernment. We need to test the spirits to see whether they're from God because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how you can recognize the spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming and even now is already in the world. Dear children, are, are from, dear, you dear children are from God. 
because the one who is in you is greater than the, the one who is in the world. They are from the world and therefore speak from the viewpoint of the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us, but whoever is not from God does not listen to us. This is how we recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit of falsehood. Dear friends, let us love one another, okay? So that's how you know the difference. Whoever listens, whoever is not from God does not listen to us, but who is from God, they listen. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love God does not know God, because God is love. This is how we God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. We know that we live in him and he is in us because he has given us of his spirit, and we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in him and he is in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. In this way, love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment because in this world we are like him. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And he has given us this command, whoever loves God must also love one another. So again, the last two verses, three verses. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, is not true. For anyone who does not love his brother whom he has seen can't love God whom he has not seen, and he has given us this command, whoever loves God must also love his brother. And that's because when we recognize his love to us, we're able to love one another. So I pray right now that God would just show you his love for you so that you will in turn be able to love one another. Because then you'll love God and you'll love one another because you'll know his love is so great, so wonderful. He gave his son just for you. And he died on the cross just for you. And God gave his only son just for you. So I pray right now, Lord, let your love pour out on the people that are listening now so they receive that love and in return can love one another and love God. In the name of Jesus, as God has said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. But in this scripture, it also says he has loved us first. So because he's loved us first, if you recognize and understand this chapter and read it over and over if you need to, 1 John 4, as you re realize and rest in, God loved me first, you're gonna love him back easily and you're gonna love others as well. And to make sure you test the spirits and the people who are speaking from the viewpoint of the world and, and the world listens to them, but we are from God and we speak from who, the viewpoint of God. So the people of the world, you'll know the difference. And that's why the prophets who I, believe, who I listen to are just speaking the same things. We're all like prophets speaking the same things because we're hearing God. We're hearing God. But those who are not of God, you know the difference because they don't have the same viewpoint. They're not recognizing. So be encouraged. God is doing a mighty work in America. He's bringing his people back. He is restoring us and bringing us together. And he, he knows his remnant. And I pray right now that you will be added, if you don't know God, you will be added to that remnant in Jesus' name, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Say, I confess Jesus is Lord in my life. I believe he died for me. I confess he is my Savior. 
I, I acknowledge my sin and I, I, re I repent of every sin and I know that you have called for me and I want you to be Lord of my life in Jesus' name. Fill me with the Holy Spirit so I can pray in tongues and I can be led by your Spirit in Jesus' name and I can discern the te and test the spirits to see if they're from God or not. And I thank you in the name of Jesus for your blessing and your love to us. In Jesus' name. So we'll see you tomorrow. Let your words be your way to victory and congratulations on being saved filled with the Holy Spirit and getting in the word with me so you can discern and hear what God is saying in Jesus' name. See you later.